as I understand it, there are four audiobooks available by psychiatrist Thomas Saws. Those are Psychiatry, the Science of Lies, The Myth of Psychotherapy, The Myth of Mental Illness, and The Medicalization of Everyday Life. I listen to these audiobooks by psychiatrist Thomas Saws over and over. I want to explain why I do this. The audiobook that I listen to most of those four is probably Psychiatry, the Science of Lies. That book examines the history of psychiatry, the history of psychopathology, the epistemology of psychiatry, and a variety of other topics related to psychiatry. The myth of psychotherapy is somewhat similar. It examines the history of psychological therapies in certain ways. The medicalization of everyday life is a bit similar. It examines the topic of medicalization. The title of the book is actually a play on word. Sigmund Freud, I believe, had a book called The Psychopathology of Everyday Life, a book or essay by Freud, if I'm not mistaken. That book is about medicalization and all the implications of medicalization. The Myth of Mental Illness was the first major book by Thomas Saws. Psychiatrist Thomas Saws wrote about 35 books. The Myth of Mental Illness was published in about 1961. His last book was published in about 2010 or 2011. Thomas Saws was born in 1920, and he lived until about 2012. According to psychiatrist Thomas Saws, civil commitment and the insanity defense formed the foundations of psychiatric slavery. Thomas Saws was against psychiatric coercion. Thomas Saws believed that involuntary mental hospitalization is a crime against humanity. I believe he wrote an article with something to that effect as the title. I mentioned the word epistemology. Epistemology is sort of a branch of philosophy, and epistemology sort of studies and examines what are the limits of knowledge. What can we know with certainty, and what can we not know with certainty? What is actually true, and what are the limits of knowing the truth? So by listening to the audiobooks by psychiatrist Thomas Saws, one is better able to understand and potentially articulate why non-consensual psychiatry and psychiatric coercion are morally wrong. There have been many times in history when certain injustices are considered by the majority to be morally okay when they're not. It will be good if more individuals can understand and articulate this.